So the, the reason I ask the question of, of who does the security champion work for, I always think about going back in the old days is um, who's responsible for QA, right? Do you, do you put quality assurance on with the development team? In which case they they they'll run right over the the quality assurance if they are running up against the time zone uh, the timelines that they had to deal with. So when I think about security champions and and Warren sort of touched on it, is he an independent individual who can have some level of force or is he buried somewhere? Because if he's really under some other organization, a line of business exec who's driving certain pieces, he might not be heard. I know for in the banking side where you have some derivatives folks, uh, their objective is get a new app up and running. I don't care how long it lasts and when it dies, as long as I make enough money in the first 30 minutes, the rest who cares, right? And and, and so the, the securities champions liable to be run over. So I was thinking about where where does the guy belong that he can be heard and, and actually make sure he's providing the function he's supposed to provide? Yep. So Warren, you you get first stab at that. Sure. So to me, they wrap. So at a so to me, um, um, security champion or compliance champion or that function of of a business part represents two hats. One is protecting the business, and one is protecting the customer. And that can be broadly defined and depends on the vertical and depends on on what they're doing. But if they're protecting the customer and making the customers happy, that's good for business. If they are protecting the business and keeping it doing what it's there to exist to do, that's good for business. Um, as for the power or the authority, I think in order to get an equal stakes at the table where it's not about being above or below, but just being equal at the say, and that either needs to be at a financial level if they're financially driven, which I would say into uh, or that or into the executive table. Um, if it's more of an equal distribution, depending on the structure of the organization. Uh, but they do need an equal say at the table just so that they can things the proper. They can be part of the considerations or part of the thought process when doing things or just doing regular business. Yeah, I'll jump in, Kiat. If you were, if the question refers, and you know, Warren was getting into the power of the person. Yeah, if it refers to sort of a, a where organizational they report. You know, I've certainly seen different models. Um, large organization, the people actually are part of the security organization, so they ultimately report through the CISOs. Uh, but I've seen small organizations where it wasn't full time role. These individuals were in the business, and so they were not. They reported up through the line of business. Uh, I'll just add, um, yeah, I've seen sort of th three different models for the most part. And uh, to Mary's point, she, she just put in the chat, I mean, it really depends on, to a certain extent, the type of organization. So in the security, you know, where you're trying to embed into the line of business and you have the headcount, you know, I, those, have, those have always reported up to me as the CISO. In, in cases where you don't have the headcount, you're globally distributed, you can't, you know, it, it, you're, you're at a low level of maturity. Often it's just literally about, I've gone on world, world tours and met with people in each office and found somebody who, who gave a damn and just dubbed them, hey, you're the security champion. I'm gonna teach you and my team's gonna connect with you and you're gonna work here. You don't report to us, but we're gonna treat you like, you know, one of our own. Um, and that has worked effectively as well. Less strategic, usually somebody who's delivering IT or, or some, some other function there in that environment. Even if you look at the, if you go up a level and go to the IT uh, champion model where the IT will create a, a business unit liaison, in that case, most of the time they're sitting at the business leader's table if, they're, if it's done right and they're dotted line into the, the C level that's running that business unit. Um, but they're still usually reporting back to the CIO as well. They're usually, you know, they got a, they're wearing two different hats. So, you know, I think that that, you know, that both of those can work. Um, as far as autonomy goes, yeah, it's a tough one. It's a little bit culture. It's a little bit how you set it up in the job description and, and how you negotiate 
for the role um, and your overall strategy. Um, it can be, uh, it, I've seen it very different depending on um, the organization. Cool. What do you think, Ed? So one of the things uh, I align with uh, Mary and the way that I, you know, I've been in a, a bit smaller organizations and that sort of thing. So one of the things that I've done in the past is I've gone and taken my team, had a small team, you know, we were a 500 person, 600 person company. Uh, we're not going to have uh, a person in each organization or I can't hire somebody who's dedicated to security and put them into the different business units. So what we did was we went around to each of the different business units and said, hey, who's interested in doing something with this? And so we found somebody in not every organization, but you know, with each of the scrum teams, we said, hey, who wants to come to our meeting and learn some new things? We went to the HR team and said, hey, do you have anybody who wants to do this? And then we would have, um, you know, a sprint meeting that was separate from everybody else's sprint meeting. And we would bring them in and we would talk about what's going on within these different organizations. That brought information into the security department so we can do risk assessments and then say, hey, have you thought about this? And then they would take our education back to their team when they had their scrum meetings or their meetings with their department and say, hey, the security department or that department's talking about this. And they identified these risks or uh, potential risks within our process, or they connect the dots because we've taught them how to do that and bring all of that together. And it's the way I think of it really is a force multiplier. You know, uh, security really needs to be everybody's responsibility, but if people don't know that it's their responsibility, how are they going to be able to act on behalf of, you know, reducing risk within the organization? Well, if you tap somebody and say, hey, help me get this message to your team, that's the way I think of the security uh, champion. I think I just had a uh, Vulcan mind meld moment with Ed, because the <laughs> entire time we've been sitting here, I've been thinking, you know, the best tool I've ever seen to get security champions all over the place is the tiered organizational hierarchy that you have in NIST. And so as an educational tool, if you guys have time or interest to look at it, one of the benefits of that hierarchy is that it assigns what is effectively a racy chart for cybersecurity to every level of the organization. The board has a role, executive management has a role, department heads have a role, system owners have a role, everybody who interacts with the system, the data, the environment, or any part of the organization has a clear role and a responsibility assigned to that. And once you enforce it, people start to care. You know, when you have a division director, if we take the CFO as example, and you say to the CFO, hey, I don't expect you to put your hands on keyboards and manage all of the financial systems, but whatever happens, that's your problem. So you better make sure that all the people that report to you are working with IT and working with security and working with compliance and internal audit to make sure that everything that needs to take place to protect these systems that support financial management is taken care of. Now the CFO has skin in the game and the role and responsibility that the CFO has He's paying more attention. You know, once I got fired from my job, effectively, not literally, because it really does take an act of Congress to fire a federal employee, but I convinced the people in charge of that organization to put security requirements on the performance management plan of all of the business leaders within that part of the organization. And they said, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Now nobody can go run and hide and say, it's not my problem, it's IT's problem. And so they decided to do a reorganization and they caused me and my boss who came up with this bright idea to no longer be in charge of anything and so we were still able to work there but we couldn't direct the activity which from my perspective was the indication that we did exactly the right thing we just had a group of people who culturally did not want to conform to the process 